I am finally getting to drive a car in which people have not shut up about for over 30 years. I'm not talking about a Lamborghini and I'm not talking about a Porsche. I'm talking, of course, about the Mazda MX-5, or as you probably know it better as, the Miata. <laughs> oh yeah, guys, buckle up because it's gonna be a, actually, it's probably gonna be a slow one. But I'm the Speedy Guidi, and this is another Speedy Review. <laughs> oh yes, the fabled Miata, the people's sports car. When you look up the word sports car, Webster's Dictionary literally has a picture of this car. JK, it actually says, a low, small, usually two-passenger automobile designed for quick response, easy maneuverability, and high-speed driving. Everything about that is correct, except for the last part, because surprise, surprise, Miatas are not fast. In fact, that's the point. I could sit here and give her all the horsepower and torque specs of this thing, but that would make as much sense as, uh, I don't know, a cappuccino after dinner, because, you know, you just don't do that. This is impossible. Vietato. No, this car is made for one purpose and one purpose only, fun. Before we go any further, I'd like to get the word in with your viewers. Yeah, sure thing, Scottish Speedy. I'm here to let you know that you should subscribe to the Speedy Guidi channel. He's a good lad and awfully smart and witty, so subscribe and follow for more automotive content. Yeah, what he said. All right, let's see what everyone's on about. Phone just went flying. So I am in the Miata RF, or retractable fastback. Most Miatas come with a manual soft top, whereas this has a powered automatic hard top. I think this one actually looks a little better. More on that later though. Since I'm not driving both back to back, I can't really tell you the intricate differences between the two. But what I can tell you is that the RF starts at $38,000, whereas the soft top starts at $27,000. And not only is the RF more expensive, it's actually a little bit heavier, 100 pounds to be exact. And you know, in a car that weighs just over a ton, eh, that weight shows. All right, now down to the nitty gritty. What is this car like to drive, baby? Well, I gotta say, this is just a simple, simple sports car, man. The clutch actuation, the shift pattern, everything is so easy. In fact, the shift knob is just comical, it's so tiny. I kind of expected this car to have kind of a ho-hum engine, and it kind of does, it really doesn't get going until the higher RPMs. Red line is around 7,500, and the noise is, it's okay, you know? It's, it's kind of what you would expect. Miatas have never been known to be fantastic sounding, so I'm okay with that. What's most surprising about this car, though, is how much suspension travel and body roll this thing has. I'm going around turns, and I'm flying around, and in a sports car, you don't really expect that. You expect it to be really hunkered down. I have to say, I really like it. That is what a lot of cars nowadays lack. They all have such stiff suspension and they want you to corner faster and harder and grip more. Well this, you really feel the suspension playing, you feel the bumps, you feel the undulations, and it allows you to really play with the car in a really fun way. Like, if you're gonna slide, you can feel it about a second before you're gonna do it. So it makes it a really fun and really confidence inspiring experience. I've never really felt a modern car with this kind of suspension roll. I really haven't. Well, that's really reserved for, you know, vintage cars. But I gotta say, man, it's a fun little car. It's peppy, it wants to go. Well, no car is perfect, and I have to say the brakes on this car aren't super confidence inspiring. They're great, they, you know, they do the job, but I kinda want something a little more oomph. The next thing I don't really like, and it has to do with this hard top, is the visibility. This B pillar, or whatever the heck you want to call it, B or C pillar, is, it's massive. I can't see anything. I hate to say it, I think I'd rather have the soft top after driving this thing. Just better visibility, a little more lightweight, just less components and less things to go wrong, and uh, cheaper. You know, one of the best parts about this car, along with the suspension travel, is how narrow the tires are. 
I mean, nowadays, every sports car, supercar, is the big, fattest rubber you can get, the stickiest compounds, stuff that lets you go around and turn so fast. But in doing that, it really raises the level of speed you have to go to to really enjoy the car. This car, with its narrow tires, and I think these tires are pretty old too, so they're not the grippiest, it really brings that level all the way down. So you can enjoy this car at 6 tenths, 8 tenths. You really get a lot out of it by going just normal speeds. As James May once said, it's more fun to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. Cock. Remember that, and you will be a very happy motorist. You know, the ergonomics in this car are actually pretty gosh darn good. So why don't we actually step outside and talk a little bit more about that. Well, here we are oh, in the interior of the Miata. I mean, guys, the ND's been around since 2015, so it is a little bit dated in here, but you know what? I don't have a problem with it because there are buttons everywhere, man. Climate controls, turning knobs, heated seats are buttons. Even the touchscreen has a little rotational knob to use it, or you can touch it. It's great. The center tack is clear and easy to read. Seating position's great if not a little bit high, but you know, the best part about this car is that it's got CarPlay. The car's got CarPlay. That's basically 80% of the battle right there. Not even my GTI has that. You know, if I were to say one bad thing about this interior, it's that it is a little bit cramped. There's not enough storage space. I mean, there's no glove box for one. There's one little place for your phone right here, but it goes flying out anytime you floor it. It's got the center armrest, but fits basically a phone or fast track. And then it's got this little thing. I don't know what the heck that fits, but you know what? This is just a weekend fun car, so who needs a bunch of storage, right? Now, on to the trunk. And you know what? It's not as big as I want it to be because of the automatic retractable hardtop, but it's not so bad. I mean, it's getting a little hot out, so I'm going to put this in there. It fits everything you want. I mean, it even fits this stick that I just found. Kinda. Hey, and while I'm out here, Let's talk about exterior styling. Mazda does a great job of making happy cars. I mean, look at it. It's smiling from side mirror to side mirror. It's so curvy and cute. I mean, I would personally like the wheels to be spaced out a little bit more for a better stance, but you know, in this deep crystal blue Mika, it looks pretty good. But if it were me, I would have to get it in red because Miatas have to be a color, man. What's the color called again? Let me check it out. Soul Red Crystal Metallic, $595 option. Get that. So for this test, I took the Miata up to Skyline Boulevard in Northern California. Some of you may have heard of Alice's, the famous pit stop for gearheads and motorcyclists. It is situated right in the middle of some of the most gorgeous roads in Northern California. So I stopped in for a quick coffee and allowed myself the opportunity to ponder on a very important question. Interesting. Jesus Christ! Scared the merda out of me. God, you can't be doing that anymore. Anyways, guys, I've been thinking long and hard about this question, and I think I found the answer. You see, I fancy myself a drinking aficionado as well as a driving enthusiast, and those two things do not go hand in hand. It's basically the first rule in the driving handbook. Don't drink and drive. But gosh darn it, don't I love a nice glass of wine, a Negroni, or a spritz on the weekend, man. Just loosen up a bit, you know? So, after a lot of deliberation, in my professional, unprofessional opinion, the ND Miata is the humble, light beer. Let me explain to you why. These are simple, no frills, alcoholic beverages. Cost of admission is super low and they're accessible to basically anyone over 21, right? You can consume these in large amounts all day. Have a ball. Let's contrast that too. Dom Perignon, probably the most expensive champagne on the market right now. People who drink Dom Perignon wouldn't even look in the same direction as a light beer because this is exclusive. Drinking this is an experience. Not everyone can 
enjoy a glass of Dom Perignon. People who drink light beer would say, why the hell are you spending that much money to do the same exact thing? These beers do exactly what this does. They both get you drunk, but they do so in very different ways. I think the Dom Perignon drinker is a Ferrari driver. Ferrari driver would never drive a Miata, never in a million years. Why would he? Miata driver, why would he ever want to drive a supercar? He can't even drive it on the streets. You have to drive it 50 miles an hour everywhere. What's the point of that? You know what? I think today, the Miata wins. Cheers. All right, that explanation may be a little stupid, but it does prove a point. You know, this car's never really tried to be the most or the best at anything. It's never won accolades for being the fastest car, the most grippy car, but it's the enthusiast choice. It's the most fun car, and you can't measure that with numbers. There's a reason why it's the best-selling sports car in the entire world. I mean, even Jay Leno says the original N.A. Miata will soon be a collector's item. Its simplicity and singular purpose make it a standout in today's world of lane departure alerts, cruise control, self-driving, all that nonsense. This is a back-to-basic sports car. You know, if you want to get in a car and just have fun and drive, this is it, man. And that is why I think this thing will hold value in the future. But you know what? Don't ask me. Ask my buddy Dylan Orluck at DuPont Registry. The guy's a genius. Hey, um, Dylan. Um, hey, uh, what's up? Yeah, no, Speedy Guidi, he's, he's, he called again. He wants to do a video on the Indy Miata. He reached out to you because... Because I'm a Miata guy? Yeah, you've owned a few. <sighs> yeah, I've had a couple of NAs in my day. I'm not going to sit here and lie to the Speedy Guidi's audience, okay? But that's, like, not something that we carry here at DuPont Registry. We don't have these in inventory, like, like I don't know. I do, I don't, he wants something about the car, just, you own them, say okay. something about it. Um, but the Miata platform is awesome. I've had four NA Miatas, and I regret selling them every single time. It's, it's a car that is going to be a classic forever. People are always going to love, uh, whatever Miata variant it is. The NV is just the next step technologically. You get some of the creature comforts that you wouldn't get in an NA. Um, and they're not that expensive. I mean, if you're looking for a car that you could take to the track, you could enjoy it on back roads that you could daily drive. Um, I mean, they're like $20,000, $20, and you know, that's a lot for an NA, but uh, for everything else that you get with this car, it makes sense to me. So, I mean, you can tell Speedy Guidi that. Okay, I'll send it, that's fine. Thank you for that analysis, Dylan. Truly riveting stuff. You know what, I gotta come clean. I've been driving this car all day. And when I got the keys to it, I thought in my head, all right, I'm gonna drive this car and love it so much, I'm gonna get back in my car and want to sell it immediately and get one of these things. And strangely enough, I don't feel that way. It's really odd. This car is a recipe that everyone loves, that I love. Front engine, rear wheel drive, manual transmission, sports car. Like that's a winner in everyone's book. But there's something about this car, the recipe that doesn't make me love it. And that's, that's that X factor, man. It's missing the fizz. I can't describe it, you can't describe it, but this isn't a car I'd really want to own. Maybe with a fruitier exhaust or something, but I'm a little disappointed that I don't, I'm not in love with it. I'm going to give the keys back tonight and I know that I won't really think of this car when I get out of it. You know, only certain cars really do that and cars that I want to own have to have that quality. I got to drive an original NA. Maybe that one's a little bit better. Wait a tick. Oh, cripes. You're still here? Didn't you get to drive an NA Miata this week? Oh, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Whilst editing this video, I spontaneously had the opportunity 
to drive a mint condition Miata NA from 1993. This is the car I was hoping the ND to be. It was so raw and unapologetically simple that I just fell in love with it. I think if I were to ever buy a Miata, it would have to be this, Genesis. Yeah, I'm not really saying anything groundbreaking here, but it's worth noting that you can't beat the original. Now onto the conclusion. Well, that just about does it for me, folks. I mean, this thing is an absolute dynamic weapon. It's so fun. Everything you want it to do, it'll do that and even more. But you know what? This thing just doesn't pull at the heartstrings like I was hoping it would. Unfortunately, it's just missing that X factor for me. I don't know what it is. I think I gotta try the soft top. Well, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. If you like the music you're hearing, give my buddy Charlie Ford a follow on Instagram. Thanks as well to the DuPont Dream Team, Dylan and Eddie, for their top-notch professional car broker opinions. Links to all these gentlemen's pages will be below. Lastly, if you like the review, make sure to like and subscribe. If you don't subscribe, I'll make sure you never see the light of day ever again. Scotty, you can't threaten our viewers. That's just preposterous. But seriously, subscribe or die. Ciao.